What's up guys and welcome to FPL Today. I'm the man in the know, JNO, and welcome to Midfielders to Watch from the end of the Fancy Premier League 2018-2019 season that we may want to put into our beginning Game Week 1 squads for the Fancy Premier League 2019-20 season. In the comments down below, let me know who you think will be your first midfielder pick for your Fancy Premier League 2019-20 season and let's get on with the video. So we're going to start off with the episode criteria as always and again it's very similar to the forwards to watch. It's midfielders need to be outside the premium bracket. They can be in the mid price bracket but they can't be your Sterlings, your Salas, the ones we all know about and we'll all be clamouring to get into our sides in the Fantasy Premier League 1920 season. They need free returns or more roughly but if they do impress me enough to get into this then they will and the Twitter vote will be also taken into account with how heavily I talk about the players and how quick they come up in the video if you do want to follow me on twitter my handle is at jno underscore fpl also you've got my instagram and my patreon on the screen and let's get into the midfielders so we start off with the players that i was the most impressed with and their points totals do vary but we also are taking into account the eye test and that eye test probably revolves around Diogo Jota the most at 6.3 million. I think Diogo Jota at the end of the season started to really show his class and of course had some games where he was very unlucky not to score more points. Diogo Jota, if he isn't priced too highly, looks like a very nailed on choice. Of course, there is always the worry that second season syndrome, potentially Wolves won't do as well as they did this season. But I think Diogo Jota and that Wolves side in general could keep improving. He managed to get 28 points from the last six games in the 2018-19 season, getting two goals and one assist with 21 shots on goal, 20 inside the box and seven on target. Those are pretty decent returns for a £6.3 million midfielder. He had five big chances, only scoring one of them. And big chances is something I want to focus on for a second because there were some comments in the video about forwards that potentially I need to look at the quality of chances that these players are getting and not so much the amount of shots. And that's what the big chances is. And that is also what the expected goals is. The expected goals shows the kind of situations players have been in and whether they are very good goal scoring opportunities or very bad. You take that score, that is how much they think the player should score. And then we look at how many they actually did score. So taking Diogo Jota as an example, you've got expected goals of 3.4. He actually only scored two, which means he's under the amount of goals they believe he should have scored in the last six games of the season. His conversion was at 9.5. Again, that shows you how many of his chances he's actually converting into goals. And then you've got chances created as well of 14 chances created, one of which came as an assist. But also we're showing chances created that created a chance that was on target and we have a score of one for Diogo Jota. So the type of chances he created potentially weren't the best ones. However, Diogo Jota did have a great end to the season and looks like a very good choice for your game week one squads in the 1920 season and Diogo Jota in his half of the poll actually got 49% of the vote which means it looks like he'll be a very popular choice going into the new season potentially with a high enough team selected by percentage where you have to worry about him if you don't have him in your sights the next one we look at is Ryan Fraser working for once the other way around than we usually do Ryan Fraser at 6.4 million was a bit of a patchy player but when he did score he usually got double digit hauls at 6.4 million you got 36 points from one goal and three assists his chances created is generally very high as you can see at 21 with 10 of those resulting in a shot on target he managed to get 15 shots on goal 12 from inside the box with six on target he only had one big chance though which means he doesn't generally get very good chances on goal his expected goals was at 1.3 which means he was just under his expected goals with a difference of 0 0.03 and his conversion was at 13.3 percent but it's mainly chances created where you're getting your significant points from ryan fraser now of course it does depend on what happens with ryan fraser over the preseason. potentially he could be having a transfer away from bournemouth he could be moving away from his partner in crime callum wilson if that is the case we will have to reevaluate his worth to us but Ryan Fraser is definitely one I'm keeping an eye on as the preseason continues. And in the Twitter poll, Ryan Fraser in his bracket got 29% of the votes, which shows he is in significant favour with the followers I have on Twitter. 
And then we move on to Nathan Redmond at 5.5 million. He managed to get 37 points from three goals and one assist. A great end to the season for him. He got a significant amount of votes in the polls as well. Managing to get 42% of the votes. So potentially, again, the player that's going to be very heavily considered for Game Week 1 squads. Three goals, one assist from 21 shots on goal and 13 from inside the box with eight on target. He had four big chances, which was one less than Diogo Jota, but he scored two of his, which is one more. Expected goals was 2.9 for Nathan Redmond, which means he was just above his expected goals. And he had a conversion rate of 14.3%, the best on this list, with 12 chances created and eight chances that he created resulted in a shot on target. Now for me, Nathan Redmond is a bit like Diogo Jota, probably pretty secure at his club at the moment. I haven't heard many transfer rumours surrounding Nathan Redmond. At 5.5 million, if he doesn't get a significant price hike, which I think his form only really came at the end of the season, so probably we will not see, I think he will still be a cheap enabler for your Game Week 1 squads that could be very heavily chosen. So he is definitely one to keep an eye on, but I think he will still be in the same surroundings come the start of the season. We move on to some other midfielders to watch, and we're going to focus on Lucas Moura, Yuri Tillemans, and Ryan Babel. Now, with Ryan Babel and Tillemans, there is no guarantee that they are going to be in the Fantasy Premier League next season. Ryan Babel was on loan at Fulham. Maybe he did enough to secure a move to a Premier League club because he did have a good end to the season. But we do not know about that yet. Yuri Tillemans is getting the interest of some Premier League clubs. Leicester are very, very keen to secure his signature and his contract to Leicester. And Leicester, of course, looked very good at the end of the season. So Tillemans looks like he will be in the Premier League next season. Then, of course, Lucas Moura. Again, I've heard nothing to suggest he won't be at Spurs next season. We'll start off with Ryan Babel. 29 points, two goals scored, one assist. He got six shots on target, two from inside the box. So a lot of his threat comes from outside the box. However, he managed to get two big chances scoring one of them. Expected goals was at 0.9, which means he significantly outdid his expected goals by 1.1. Conversion was at 33.3%, a very good conversion with 10 chances created, six of which resulted in a shot on target. However, of course, like I already said, we don't know if he'll be in the Premier League next season. Ryan Babel ended the vote with 7%, not a very popular option, but still someone that if you got a transfer somewhere could be cheap enough to be considered for your game week one squads. We then have Yuri Tillemans at 6 million. Again, nice cheap budget enabler. 29 points from two goals, one assist. 13 shots on goal, but again, a lot of his threat comes from outside the box with only three coming from inside the box. Six shots on target, one big chance, which he scored. Expected goals was only at 0.5. So again, a player that significantly outdid his expected goals by 1.5. Conversion at 15.4. He only created four chances, but three of the chances he created resulted in a shot on target. So the chances creating are good ones. Yuri Tillemans coming in on the vote on Twitter at 34%. So again, another player that is in favour with the people that follow me on Twitter. And then we go to Lucas Moura, 6.9 million. Now, Lucas Moura, again, seems like a patchy player, a bit similar to your Ryan Fraser. He did get 33 points, however, at the tail end of the season, becoming a very important player. I think we all know what happened in the Champs League. Four Spurs in the end of their season. 33 points and three goals scored, no assist. 15 shots on goal, but unlike the other two on the screen right now, seven from inside the box. So it's about 50-50 as far as where his shots come from. Eight shots on target. He had two big chances and didn't score any of them. So all the goals he was scoring weren't considered big chances, which you can also look at as he didn't do much with his big chances, but he did do a lot with chances that would be considered more difficult to score. Expected goals at 1.3, which means, again, another player that significantly outdid his expected goals by 1.7. Conversion at 20%, with six chances created, three of which resulted in the shot on target. I think the issue with Mora is whether he will be a regular starter for Spurs come the start of the new season. 21% of people voted for him in the polls on my Twitter. But with Ericsson, Deli Alli, Hyung Min Sun and Harry Kane... And then potential transfers coming in as well. Will Lucas Moura be as important a player for Spurs in the new season? Anyway guys, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel if you're new. Also hitting that notification bell. 
All these stats came from Fantasy Football Fix, where you can build your own tables so you can look at the stats that you believe are most important. They also have a pre-season pack out right now, which will enable you to look back at your previous season and also look at some strategies that a lot of the big managers from 2018-2019 used. If you do want to support the channel in any way, please check out all the links in the description down below. Thank you so much for those of you still around during this quiet part of the season. I will keep pumping out videos because I just love it. I just love it. So if you love it as well, please in the comments down below, leave who you think is going to be in your Game Week 1 squad in the midfield that isn't a premium priced player. I've been JNO, this has been FPL Today, and remember, it's all about the game.